Boxes that were from his mother's house, and his mother must have died at least 15 years ago. But the boxes came into our basement and we never looked at them. My dad retired to an old family house in Vermont and lived there until he died two years ago at the age of 98. And we inherited that house, which was full of his things. He never threw out anything. So we're still going through everything in that house. Are you good at doing that? No. I mean, no. And they also say that you really can't have a maybe box. No, no. no. In the course of this move, I found my uh, thesis. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, my God. I started reading it the first three pages. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> what Absolutely was it on? Not. What was it on? Uh, it was on John Dos Passos. Uh-huh. Uh, and it was on communication. And, and I've always been interested in communication. I mean, uh -huh. that's always driven me in everything I've done. So uh, to find this thing was just, Jan said, what are you laughing at? I said, I don't know. It says Prill Meyer, a Prill Couch thesis, but I, uh, so it's it was. It's amazing you still have it. I, it is amazing, but it was just so interesting to go through this move and what you find. Mm -hmm. You know, with four kids, we kept a, an awful lot of uh, things in storage to help them out. And some of it's still, you know, being uh, kept around that way mm. um, that they may want it someday and our Westerners who don't think like New Englanders at all. I was essentially a single mother for my two children because my husband um, left uh, for someone to marry someone else when my younger daughter was only two and my older daughter was uh, just shy of seven. I worried about the fact that uh, I was the single parent. But I have to say that a couple of things worked out extraordinarily well. We were a kind of a team. We were an all-girl team. The whole team thing was a great plus. I don't think in affairs the worst kind of betrayal, there are worse betrayals. No, it's I'm very unpleasant, but there are worse betrayals. I was married 38 years until, unfortunately, my husband died. He passed away while we were in the process of going to make uh, a huge building for manufacturing sales and uh, it was up to me to decide whether or not I would carry on doing that so I elected to carry on. Both my husbands, I was there pounds by then, I was breathing for him, you know? mm, yeah. I had him this way yeah. and I would breathe for him. Yeah. Yeah. Dan is buried Way down there. I crawled into bed with them. Yes. And how? Yes. And, yes. And, and I wish, like I, anything, I had done this in in that hospital room with Larry, because but they had these rails up on either side. Uh, yeah. of Why didn't I, those last few mm -hmm. days, pull down the damn rail and get in the bed and hold him and yes. say, "Come on, let's snuggle, honey." Yes. Oh. And I spent several nights uh, sitting by Larry's bed. Because pretty soon he was in a sort of a coma, you know? Yeah. And I don't think he could hear me. I didn't know. I didn't know. And the nurse said, listen, Hope, go home. She said, you need to really take a good nap mm -hmm. in your own bed. You're exhausting yourself. And, uh, and, mm -hmm. and she said, and I'll call you if his condition changes anyway. And I was, hadn't been asleep more than mm -hmm. 20 minutes when she mm -hmm. called and said he just passed away. Mm -hmm. And when I got, went back and cried and cried, I said, I wasn't here. She said... He knew that. They wait they, for you to they, go. They, they wait, wait for, for you to go. go. You know what else is, is was sad to me? I, I never talked, frankly, about impending death with Larry ever. I did the Greek thing. I'll let you sit up and I'll bring you such and such to eat uh -huh. and so on. You know, we do this. Knowing full well that the person is going to die. But I wish that I had been able to sit with him and say, Honey, don't worry about dying. You've been the most marvelous man. Oh, yes. What didn't I say that instead of wasting time saying, you'll be fine tomorrow. Oh, oh. So, you know, and later someone said, well, he knew you well enough. I probably, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and maybe he didn't know he was going to die. And things have been tough since Dan died because the kids, and this is something nobody tells you, kids really make it hard on the surviving spouse. Mm. And particularly if the surviving spouse is the wife, I think it's a hangover mm. of the Virgin Mary syndrome. Uh -huh. I was kidding with my daughter one day and I said, you know, Wendy, I, you know, I hate to break it to you, but I'm not a virgin. She didn't think it was funny. I thought oh. it was hilarious. Mm. But I went on these cruises thinking I was going to have great shipboard romances. And I discovered that men do not travel alone.
women do. Men don't do it. If you travel with another man, you're gay. I came back with two arms full of groceries, and for the first and so far last time in my life, I had a panic attack. Mm. And the, you know, I was dizzy and palpitating. And I thought, what is, why? And I realized that what was happening was that for the first time, I had brought back groceries to feed only myself. Mm. Mm. Only myself. Mm. And that I was now having to be just me with myself. Mm. It was hard because that I was defining myself in terms of my usefulness to somebody else or preciousness mm -hmm. to somebody else. And I got worse and worse and finally I installed lots of mirrors in my house mm. because I realized that I thought that there was nobody there. Uh -huh. So by putting up some mirrors I could see that there was somebody mm. And then we feel much better. Mm. Now what about your life? I don't have time. I'm too tired. It takes energy. My yeah. energy is all my work. That's my love life. That's good. And um, when I go to bed at night, and I'm in this nice queen size bed, and I just, you know, I had a good day working. I'm so happy to be in that bed alone. It's it's a great sense of freedom. I'm not tied to anything. Just keep it up.